पेज फोर्टी सिक्स लेसन फाइव इंडिगो अबाउट द ऑथर लुइस फिशर हु लिव्ड बिटवीन एटीन नाइन्टी सिक्स एंड नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वॉज बॉर्न इन फिलाडेल्फिया He served as a volunteer in the British Army between 1918 and 1920. Fisher made a career as a journalist and wrote for the New York Times, the Saturday Reviews, and for European and Asian publications. He was also a member of the faculty of Princeton University. The following is an excerpt from his book, The Life of Mahatma Gandhi. The book has been reviewed as one of the best books ever written on Gandhi by Times Educational Supplement. Notice these expressions in the text. Infer their meaning from the context. Urge the departure. Conflict of duties. Harbor a man like me. seek a prop now the chapter when i first visited gandhi in 1942 at his ashram in sevagram in central india he said i'll tell you how it happened that i decided to urge the departure of the british it was in 1917 He had gone to the December 1916 annual convention of the Indian National Congress Party in Lucknow. There were 2,301 delegates and many visitors. During the proceedings, Gandhi recounted, "A peasant came up to me, looking like any other peasant in India, poor and emaciated, and said, 'I am Raj Kumar Shukla. I am from Champaran.'" and i want you to come to my district gandhi had never heard of the place it was in the foothills of the towering himalayas near the kingdom of nepal under an ancient arrangement the champaran peasants were sharecroppers rajkumar shukla was one of them he was illiterate but resolute he had come to the congress session to complain about the injustice of the landlord system in bihar and somebody had probably said speak to gandhi we have already started page number 47 gandhi told shukla he had an appointment in kanpur and was also committed to go to other parts of india shukla accompanied him everywhere When Gandhi returned to his ashram near Ahmedabad, Shukla followed him to the ashram. For weeks he never left Gandhi's side. Fix a date, he begged. Impressed by the sharecropper's tenacity and story, Gandhi said, "I have to be in Calcutta on such and such a date. Come and meet me, and take me from there." months passed shukla was sitting on his haunches at the appointed spot in calcutta when gandhi arrived he waited till gandhi was free then the two of them boarded a train for the city of patna in bihar there shukla led him to the house of a lawyer named rajendra prasad who later became president of the congress party and of india Rajendra Prasad was out of town but the servants knew Shukla as a poor yeoman who pestered who pestered their master to help the indigo sharecroppers so they let him stay on the grounds with his companion Gandhi whom they took to be another peasant but Gandhi was not permitted to draw water from the well lest some drops from the bucket pollute the entire source how did they know that he was not an untouchable think as you read number 1 strike out what is not true in the following a rajkumar shukla was 
a a sharecropper b a politician c a delegate d a landlord next rajkumar shukla was a poor b physically strong c illiterate the next why is rajkumar shukla described as being resolute the next why do you think the servants thought gandhi to be another peasant now we go on with the chapter gandhi decided to go first to muzaffarpur which was en route to champaran to obtain more complete information about conditions than shukla was capable of imparting he accordingly sent a telegram to professor j b kripalani of the arts college of muzaffarpur whom he had seen at tagore's shantiniketan school page 48 the train arrived at midnight 15th april 1917 kripalani was waiting at the station with a large body of students gandhi stayed there for two days in the home of professor malkani a teacher in a government school it was an extraordinary thing in those days gandhi commented for a government professor to harbor a man like me in smaller localities the indians were afraid to show sympathy for advocates of home rule the news of gandhi's advent and of the nature of his mission spread quickly through muzaffarpur and to champaran sharecroppers from champaran began arriving on foot and by conveyance to see their champion muzaffarpur lawyers called on gandhi to brief him they frequently he represented peasant groups in court they told him about their cases and reported the size of their fee gandhi chided the lawyers for collecting a big fee from the sharecroppers he said i have come to the conclusion that we should stop going to law courts taking such cases to the courts does little good where the peasants are so crushed and fear stricken law courts are useless the real life for them is to be free from fear most of the arable land in champaran district was divided into large estates owned by englishmen and worked by indian tenants page 49 the chief commercial crop was indigo the landlords compelled all tenants to plant 320ths of 15% of their holdings with indigo and surrender the entire indigo harvest as rent this was done by long term contract think as you read number 1 list the places that gandhi visited between his first meeting with shukla and his arrival at champaran second what did the peasants pay the british landlords as rent what did the british now want instead and why what did the british want instead and why what would be the impact of synthetic indigo on the prices of natural indigo now we continue with the chapter presently the landlords learned that germany had developed synthetic indigo they thereupon obtained agreements from the sharecroppers to pay them compensation for being released from the 15% arrangement the sharecropping arrangement was irksome to the peasants and many signed willingly those who resisted engaged lawyers the landlords hired thugs meanwhile the information about synthetic indigo reached the illiterate peasants who had signed and they wanted their money back at this point gandhi arrived in champaran he began by trying to get the facts first he visited the secretary of the british landlords association the secretary told him that they could give no information to an outsider gandhi answered that he was no outsider next gandhi called on the british official commissioner of the tirhut division 
in which the Champaran district lay. The commissioner, Gandhi reports, proceeded to bully me and advised me forthwith to leave Tirhut. Gandhi did not leave. Instead, he proceeded to Motihari, the capital of Champaran. Several lawyers accompanied him. At the railway station, a vast multitude greeted Gandhi. He went to a house and, using it as headquarters, continued his investigations. A report came in that a peasant had been maltreated in a nearby village. Gandhi decided to go and see. The next morning he started out on the back of an elephant. He had not proceeded far when the police superintendent's messenger overtook him and ordered him to return to town in his carriage. Page number 50 Gandhi complied. The messenger drove Gandhi home where he served him with an official notice to quit Champaran immediately. Gandhi signed a receipt for the notice and wrote on it that he would disobey the order. In consequence, Gandhi received a summons to appear in court the next day. All night, Gandhi remained awake. He telegraphed Rajendra Prasad to come from Bihar with influential friends. He sent instructions to the ashram. He wired a full report to the Viceroy. Morning found the town of Motihari black with peasants. They did not know Gandhi's record in South Africa. They had merely heard that a Mahatma who wanted to help them was in trouble with the authorities. Their spontaneous demonstration in thousands around the courthouse was the beginning of their liberation from fear of the British. The officials felt powerless without Gandhi's cooperation. He helped them regulate the crowd. He was polite and friendly. He was giving them concrete proof that their might, hitherto dreaded and unquestioned, could be challenged by Indians. The government was baffled. The prosecutor requested the judge to postpone the trial. Apparently, the authorities wished to consult their superiors. Gandhi protested against the delay. He read a statement pleading guilty. He was involved, he told the court, in a conflict of duties. On the one hand, not to set a bad example as a lawbreaker, on the other hand, to render the humanitarian and national service for which he had come. He disregarded the order to leave, not for want of respect for lawful authority, but in obedience to the higher law of our being, the voice of conscience. He asked the penalty to you. The magistrate announced that he would pronounce sentence after a two-hour recess and asked Gandhi to furnish bail for those 120 minutes. Gandhi refused. The judge released him without bail. When the court reconvened, the judge said he would not deliver the judgment for several days. Meanwhile, he allowed Gandhi to remain at liberty. Page 51 Think as you read. The events in this part of the text Illustrate Gandhi's method of working. Can you identify some instances of this method and link them to his ideas of satyagraha and non-violence? So we come to the beginning of page 51. Rajendra Prasad, Bridge Kishore Babu, Maulana Mazharul Haq and several other prominent lawyers had arrived from Bihar. They conferred with Gandhi. What would they do if he was sentenced to prison? Gandhi asked. Why? The senior lawyer replied. They had come to advise and help him. If he went to jail, there would be nobody to advise and they would go home. What about the injustice to the sharecroppers? Gandhi demanded. The lawyers withdrew to consult. 
Rajendra Prasad has recorded the upshot of their consultations. They thought amongst themselves that Gandhi was totally a stranger and yet he was prepared to go to prison for the sake of the peasants. If they, on the other hand, being not only residents of the adjoining districts but also those who claimed to have served these peasants should go home, it would be shameful desertion. They accordingly went back to Gandhi and told him they were ready to follow him into jail. The battle of Champaran is won, he exclaimed. Then he took a piece of paper and divided the group into pairs and put down the order in which each pair was to court arrest. Several days later, Gandhi received a written communication from the magistrate informing him that the lieutenant governor of the province had ordered the case to be dropped. Civil disobedience has triumphed, the first time in modern India. Gandhi and the lawyers now proceeded to conduct a far-flung inquiry into the grievances of the farmers. Depositions by about 10,000 peasants were written down and notes made on other evidence. Documents were collected and whole area throbbed with the activity of the investigators and the vehement protests of the landlords. In June, Gandhi was summoned to Sir Edward Gate, the Lieutenant Governor. Page 52 Before he went, he met leading associates and again laid detailed plans for civil disobedience if he should not return. Gandhi had four protracted interviews with the Lieutenant Governor, who, as a result, appointed an official commission of inquiry into the indigo sharecropper situation. The commission consisted of landlords, government officials, and Gandhi as the sole representative of the peasants. The visit, undertaken casually on the entreaty of an unlettered peasant in the expectation that it would last a few days, occupied almost a year of Gandhi's life. The official inquiry assembled a crushing mountain of evidence against the big planters. And when they saw this, they agreed, in principle, to make refunds to the peasants. But how much must we pay? they asked Gandhi. They thought he would demand repayment in full of the money which they had illegally and deceitfully extorted from the sharecroppers. He asked only 50%. There he seemed adamant, writes Reverend J. Z. Hodge, a British missionary in Champaran who observed the entire episode at close range. Thinking probably that he would not give way, the representative of the planters offered to refund to the extent of 25%, and to his amazement, Mr. Gandhi took him at his word, thus breaking the deadlock. This settlement was adopted unanimously by the Commission. Gandhi explained that the amount of the refund was less important than the fact that the landlords had been obliged to surrender part of the money and with it part of their prestige. Therefore, as far as the peasants were concerned, the planters had behaved as lords above the law. Now the peasant saw that he had rights and defenders. He learned courage. Page 53 Think as you read. Number 1. Why did Gandhi agree to a settlement of 25% refund to the farmers? Number 2. How did the episode change the plight of the peasants? Now we come back to page 53. Events justified Gandhi's position. Within a few years, the British planters abandoned their estates, which reverted to the peasants. Indigo sharecropping disappeared. Gandhi never contented himself with large political or economic solutions. He saw the cultural and social backwardness in the Champaran villages and wanted to do something about it immediately. He appealed for teachers, 
Mahadev Desai and Narhari Parikh, two young men who had just joined Gandhi as disciples and their wives volunteered for the work. Several more came from Bombay, Pune and other distant parts of the land. Devadas, Gandhi's youngest son, arrived from the ashram and so did Mrs. Gandhi. Primary schools were opened in six villages. Kasturbai taught the ashram rules on personal cleanliness and community sanitation. Health conditions were miserable. Gandhi got a doctor to volunteer his services for six months. Three medicines were available, castor oil, quinine and sulfur ointment. Anybody who showed a coated tongue was given a dose of castor oil. Anybody with malaria fever received quinine plus castor oil. Anybody with skin eruptions received ointment plus castor oil. Gandhi noticed the filthy state of women's clothes. He asked Kasturbai to talk to them about it. One woman took Kasturbai into her hut and said, Look, there is no box or cupboard here for clothes. The sari I am wearing is the only one I have. During his long stay in Champaran, Gandhi kept long-distance watch on the ashram. He sent regular instructions by mail and asked for financial accounts. Once he wrote to the residents that it was time to fill in the old latrine trenches and dig new ones, otherwise the old ones would begin to smell bad. Page 54 The Champaran episode was a turning point in Gandhi's life. What I did, he explained, was a very ordinary thing. I declared that the British could not order me about in my own country. But Champaran did not begin as an act of defiance. It grew out of an attempt to alleviate the distress of large numbers of poor peasants. This was the typical Gandhian pattern. This was the typical Gandhi pattern. His politics were intertwined with practical day-to-day -day problems of the millions. He was a loyalty to living human beings. In everything Gandhi did, moreover, he tried to mould a new free Indian who could stand on his own feet and thus make India free. Earlier in the Champaran action, Charles Freer Andrews the English pacifist who had become a devoted who had become a devoted follower of the mahatma came to bid gandhi farewell before going on a tour to duty to the fiji islands gandhi's lawyer friends thought it would be a good idea for andrews to stay in champaran and help them andrews was willing if gandhi agreed but gandhi was vehemently opposed he said you think that in this unequal fight it would be helpful if we have an Englishman on our side? This shows the weakness of your heart. The cause is just and you must rely upon yourselves to win the battle. You should not seek a prop in Mr. Andrews because he happens to be an Englishman. He had read our minds correctly, Rajan Prasad comments. And we had no reply. Gandhi, in this way, taught us a lesson in self-reliance. Self-reliance, Indian independence and help to sharecroppers were all bound together. Understanding the text Number 1. Why do you think Gandhi considered the Champaran episode to be a turning point in his life? Number two, how was Gandhi able to influence lawyers? Give instances. Number three, what was the attitude of the average Indian in smaller localities towards advocates of home rule? Number four, how do we know that ordinary people too contributed to the freedom movement? Page 55 talking about the text. 
discuss the following number 1 freedom from fear is more important than legal justice for the poor do you think that the poor of india are free from fear after independence number 2 the qualities of a good leader working with words number 1 list the words used in the text that are related to legal procedures for example deposition number 2 list other words that you know that fall into this category thinking about language number 1 notice the sentences in the text which are in direct speech why does the author use quotations in his narration number 2 notice the use or non use of comma in the following sentences a when i first visited gandhi in 1942 at his ashram in sevagram he told me what happened in champaran b he had not proceeded far when the police superintendent's messenger overtook him c when the court reconvened the judge said he would not deliver the judgment for several days things to do number 1 choose an issue that has provoked a controversy like the bhopal gas tragedy or the narmada dam project in which the lives of the poor have been affected number 2 find out the facts of the case number 3 present your argument and 4 and number 4 suggest a possible settlement about the unit theme the leadership shown by mahatma gandhi to secure justice for oppressed people through convincing argumentation and negotiation page 56 sub theme contributions made by anonymous indians to the freedom movement reading comprehension intensive reading of factual writing to understand events and facts then think as you read questions at the end of each section whether they help in understanding descriptions of people consolidating facts and focusing on what is important to understand further sections next scanning for specific instances in the text to support given statements the next inferential questions to reason out certain statements in the text talking about the text discussion as a take off from the text and making pupils think about issues such as freedom from fear as a prerequisite for justice understanding leadership qualities direct relevance to pupils prospects and fluency development mm. working with words making pupils notice the specialist vocabulary used in legal parlance working with words making pupils notice the specialist vocabulary used in legal parlance noticing form use of direct speech in narration pupils are already aware of the form changes when spoken words are reported they should now be able to notice the choice of form in context of use to strengthen the effectiveness of narration the next use of the comma to separate subordinate clause from main clause if it precedes it and its omission if it comes after the main clause things to do extension activity to help pupils understand 
the method of Gandhian activism and relate it to current problems of national importance. For, in, for instance, number one, investigation of facts, number two, presentation of arguments, and number three, settlement. <laughs>